Hi, everybody. This is Dr. Kimberly Olson back again. I think this is our fourth or fifth um, session of differential diagnosis made easier. Notice it's not made easy. It's made easier. Um, and so today we're going to be talking about some of the frequently misdiagnosed or are mixed up diagnoses when it comes to schizophrenia and other types of psychotic disorders. So let's take a peeky wee. Okay, so schizophrenia spectrum and psychotic disorders. So when we think of schizophrenia, we think of delusions, hallucinations, which can be auditory, visual, tactile, or olfactory. So we can see or hear things that other people don't see and hear, but we can also feel like buggies crossing up, crawling on your skin, things that other people don't know. Factory is smell. Um, so what I want to just share with you as an aside is that if you are having somebody with issues with olfactory stuff, smell, um, please rule out trauma. Okay, I mean, obviously, if they've got other stuff going on um, that's consistent with schizophrenia, this may be an appropriate diagnosis. But please don't forget that um, if it's just olfactory, uh, make sure that you're ruling out trauma. And delusions, the one thing I want to say with you to you about delusional disorder, okay, is that delusions don't have hallucinations unless they're consistent with the delusion okay so delusions are about thoughts okay somebody can have paranoid delusions they think the government's out to get them uh they can have delusions of grandeur uh they think they're jesus uh, they think that they know more than everybody so those can be delusions but remember delusions are about your thoughts disorganized speech and or behavior so uh, when you listen to somebody with schizophrenia, a disorganized type, I, I'm thinking in terms of word salad. Um, they will talk about things that are sort of all over the place. And what's interesting to me, though, is that every now and again, they will say something lucid in that that whole uh, sort of rant. So somebody might say, um, I have a computer. It has 16 children. The 16 children went out with my dog. My dog went, oh, by the way, I'm hungry. And you're like, oh, oh okay. <laughs> so um, just know that it's it's like all this stuff that you're going, I, I, I'm not sure how this all fits together. Okay. Um, but what's interesting though, and this is just my humble opinion, is that with schizophrenia, it reminds me of uh, jigsaw puzzle pieces in a box that get tossed up in the air and the more you get to know somebody with schizophrenia there's usually some rhyme or reason or they fit in there somehow okay um in behavior of course catatonia there are people that um can oh, interestingly they can put themselves their bodies into really bizarre positions and hold it that way for like hours um if you've ever seen the uh exorcism of emily rose the stuff that she was doing at the church, that waxy flexibility. Um, yeah, they, they can do all kinds of weird body posturing and things like that. And or diminished emotional expression. So it's not uncommon for somebody with schizophrenia to be kind of flat. Um, that's why, you know, when we think about schizophrenia, I think at least the general public thinks of them as very, you know, loud and dangerous and things like that. And certainly some people with paranoid schizophrenia uh, are going to be out there talking to themselves, yelling at themselves, that sort of thing. But most people with schizophrenia kind of keep to themselves, which you can completely honor and understand. So the symptoms must be present for at least six months and cause functional impairment. Schizophreniform disorder. It's schizophrenia, but the symptoms have lasted at least one month but less than six months and functional impairment is not required. So we've got like schizophrenia one to six months. Okay. After six months, we're going to go from schizophreniform disorder to schizophrenia. And what's being suggested in the schizophreniform disorder is that we may not have functional impairment yet. Okay. Um, generally speaking, you do, but they're just saying it doesn't have to happen yet. A brief psychotic disorder, these are schizophrenia symptoms lasting less than a month, and it's temporary, okay? Yet people have brief psychotic disorders for all sorts of reasons. There's people that 
um, they can have it for health reasons. Um, they could be under a tremendous amount of stress. Um, they could, oh, fever, um, sunburns. I mean, there's all kinds of reasons somebody could have a brief psychotic episode. But again, the symptoms are less than a month, okay? And they're temporary, so they go away, okay? And let's not forget, although it's not listed on here, when you're going to see with a degree of frequency in your practice, which is amphetamine-induced psychosis. So if somebody's doing too much speed, you're going to see symptoms that look a hell of a lot like schizophrenia. And it makes sense when you start looking up um, issues with dopamine and psychosis and what's going on in the brain of somebody with schizophrenia, um, as opposed to something or what's going on in the brain of somebody with uh amphetamine induced psychosis so um make sure that you you rule out the whole dope part okay because a person may not have schizophrenia they may in fact just have the substance induced variety now that's not to suggest that it's less scary um that there aren't as many consequences because there are but one of those is organic one of them isn't okay so just keep that in mind delusional disorders thought disturbance okay paranoid grandiose persecutory, so I feel like everybody's out to get me, somatic, so um, I, I have cancer, I have this, I have that, and there's really like no um, medical evidence to support that. Uh, erotomanic, that's when you think that um, people are in love with you, okay, and others. So the key again is no hallucinations, except the ones that are consistent with the delusion, okay, so um, if I'm paranoid, maybe I hear um, people whispering, I think people are talking about me, but I don't have any other types of hallucinations. If I did, then we're going to be going over to the schizophrenia category. Okay. All right. Okay, so here are the key differential diagnoses in a sentence. A brief psychotic episode lasts less than a month. So it's really pretty much all about duration and time. Schizophreniform disorder lasts at least one month, but less than six months and does not require functional impairment. So schizophreniform disorder is going to be near one to six monthers. To be diagnosed with schizophrenia, symptoms must be present for at least six months and functional impairment. Okay. Delusional disorder is primarily a thought disturbance and doesn't frequently involve hallucinations. So people with delusions of grandeur don't tend to have a lot of hallucinations. But there are times that somebody with delusional disorder may have some type of uh, hallucination consistent only with that particular delusion. So that's your differential diagnosis. All right, so yikes, there's a twist here, guys. And I have to bring this to your attention because so many people get this wrong. Um, it's one of my sort of questions that I ask during interviews to get a sense of how well you know diagnoses. So these diagnoses share mood disturbance and psychosis. Number one, schizoaffective disorder. Okay, There's a bipolar type and there's a depressive type. And then we got bipolar with psychotic features and major depression with psychotic features. So what in the heck is the difference between these two things that are so close? All right. So in schizoaffective disorder, psychosis is ever present. Two weeks or more, even when the mood disturbance isn't there. So this person is psychotic, whether or not they're having a depressive or manic episode. Okay. That's dominant. The psychosis is the dominant feature, okay? So schizoaffective disorder means that the psychosis is dominant. It exists even when the mood disturbance doesn't. Bipolar with psychotic features, psychosis only exists during a manic, depressive, or mixed episode. So it's in fact the mood disturbance that's dominant. Okay, so the person's got mood swings, right? But the only time they have psychotic features is during like a manic or depressive episode. So you've met these people, I'm sure, that um, it may have taken you some time to do differential diagnosis with them, especially if you don't know them particularly well. But um, I certainly worked with a patient at one point that the only time she was psychotic is when she was manic. 
and it honestly um, was kind of surprised because I had never seen her in a, a manic episode and uh, she became very psychotic and I just wow um didn't see that one coming so um again it's only present during the manic depressive or mixed episode a major depressive disorder with psychotic features psychosis is only present during the major depressive episode okay so depression is dominant so some people will fall into a, a major depressive episode and then start seeing i don't know demons or hearing voices that they're horrible and that kind of thing um, but it's only present during the major depressive episode when they go back to normal or whatever that is, like in the earlier video when we were talking about differential diagnosis and mood uh, disorders, then they're fine. There's no psychosis. Okay, So hopefully this will help you um, with something that people get wrong all the time. And by the way, don't take it personally if you and the psychiatrist have a different experience of this one. Because the truth is, if I meet somebody who is psychotic and moody, I'm doing the intake, okay? Um, I I can ask clarifying questions, but, you know, psychotic folk aren't really great historians and things like that. So I may give them schizoaffective and then find out later, okay, that their mood disturbance is what's really dominant, Okay. Nobody's going to like slap your hand. You just update your diagnosis. And if they see the psychiatrist where they are psychotic, and this is the first time the psychiatrist has seen them and they're moody, and you saw them knowing that the only time they experience psychosis is when they're manic, you may have different diagnoses there. But again, you just go and consult and you work it out between the two of you. Okay. So we're going to stop for here. This was uh, psychotic disorders, um, schizophrenia and other psychotic disorders. And the next one we will be doing is on cluster B, personality. So thank you so much for watching. And I will have the next video for you ready very soon. I hope this helped. Thanks. Bye-bye.